Hello, my friends. Nice to meet you again. Inside a large semicircle, there is a small semicircle and a small circle. The diameters of the small and the large semicircles lie on the same line and share a same endpoint. The small circle is tangent to the small semicircle, the arc of the large semicircle, as well as its diameter. Both the small circle and the small semicircle have a radius of 3. So, what is the diameter of the large semicircle? Why not give a try, and we will come back soon. We can discuss this question in two ways. First, we introduce a simple but not very rigorous approach. This approach can help us find the idea to solve the question. And then we will be inspired and can prove the solution in a more rigorous way. Let's look at this simple way. We take the diameter of the semicircle as the axis of symmetry to make the symmetrical figure of the whole original figure. As a result, we obtain three identical small circles in a large circle. The three small circles are not only tangent to the large one, but also to each other. So this figure is rotationally symmetrical by each 120 degrees. The straight line passing through the centers of both the large and small circles must pass their tangent points. The straight line passing through the center of each two small circles must also pass through their tangent point. So we get an equilateral triangle with side length twice as long as the radius of the small circle. The distance from the center to the end point of an equilateral triangle is equal to 1 over square root of 3 times the side length, which is twice the square root of 3, plus the radius of the small circle 3, we obtain the radius of the large circle. The diameter of the large circle is therefore 4 times the root of 3 plus 6. This approach is quite simple and easy to understand. However, it is a little more complicated to give a rigorous proof of some of the steps involved. It doesn't matter since we already have the answer. So we keep this idea in mind, only change the approach a little bit, and express this idea in a more rigorous way. To this end, we first name the centers of the large semicircle, the small semicircle, and the small circle as A, B, and C, respectively. The end point shared by the small and large semicircles is D. The tangent point between the small circle and the large semicircle arc is E. The tangent point with the diameter is F and the tangent point between the small circle and the small semicircle is G. We connect the centers A and C and further extend it. It must pass the tangent point E. The line connecting centers B and C must pass through the tangent point G. We connect C and F. So CF is perpendicular to FB. And CF is equal to half of CB. So in the right triangle CBF, we can get two conclusions. The angle CBF is equal to 30 degrees, and BF is equal to square root of 3 times CF. On the other hand, because both AE and AD are the radius of the great semicircle, EC and BD are again equal. So AC is equal to AB. ABC is an isosceles triangle. So the angle ACB is also equal to 30 degrees. The angle ACF is 60 degrees minus 30 degrees, which is also 30 degrees. In this case, Triangle ACF is also a right triangle with an acute angle equal to 30 degrees. AF is one third of square root of 3 times CF. AB is therefore two thirds of square root of 3 times CF. AD is longer than AB by another length of CF. That is two times the square root of 3 plus 3. So the diameter of the semicircle is four times the square root of 3 plus 6. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.